just tell us where, what is going on, where have you been? Yeah, I was away for a sabbatical. I was writing books. I took time off to sit down and write our story and my story. So one of the things that I'm looking forward is sharing with you our story, which includes my 20 years of work at Makere University in terms of AIDS prevention and transforming lives of young people, uh, the work of championing the family, both in Uganda and in Africa, and the resistance that we have had as a people against the importation of foreign cultures, including the quote unquote, the homosexual uh, agenda. Yeah. I've seen in the, in the news that there was a case that was related to me due to persecution. There's been many of us who have been persecuted for standing up for the family, the natural family. It's extremely difficult. It's extremely, uh, people try to make all sorts of allegations against you. There was a case at the ICC of crimes against humanity that uh, people like us, me, Father Lokodo, Bahati, David Bahati, and others, that, that because we've stood up against the homosexual agenda, that uh, we are guilty of crimes against humanity. Uh, absolute fabrications. But uh, thankfully, there was a court case that they had against us. The ICC never took place. Then there was one in America that was dismissed not too long ago. It was not against me directly. It was against someone else who was a pro-family leader in the U.S., but they mentioned us in that case. Okay, I, was doing, I was doing my work of studying. Yes, I'm aware that there's people who are persecuting us, but I made a decision that it was time to take a sabbatical. And what I've been doing is I've been reflecting on Africa's resistance against homosexuality. And this journey, it's not just now. It's, it's, we've, we've gone through... If you remember, it started off in 2003. Donors demand gay rights, and uh, the parliament had a debate. I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, and then uh, parliament says, please, this is 2003. Government, make sure that you do not accept these bad manners. And uh, up to where we reached in 2004, it's a struggle. It's been an ongoing struggle. But we are seeing that God is fighting on our behalf. We are seeing that, uh, yes, the times of uh, Barack Obama were extremely difficult, uh, were very, very difficult for Africa because he was an American president who made it his personal agenda to continuously uh, make the issue of homosexuality as a number one agenda. Unfortunately, this was at the cost of us fighting other issues like HIV AIDS, poverty, uh, education. It's, it's really been, a, it, was, it was a misfortune. So. Uh, I've taken time to do uh, a book, and I'm looking forward to launch this book about six weeks from now. It's Africa's Resistance to Homosexuality. Uh, that's the book that I've written. Uh, these are figurations of people's imaginations. Uh, they have all been debunked. No, we are not afraid. Uh, we continue to stand. You know when you stand for truth, you stand for truth. But the price is quite high. The price is quite high. Uh, it's costly. It's difficult. They make your life very difficult. They make your life very miserable. But uh, they, whenever there is, there's a price to pay, there's something true, it never comes easy. So I, uh, you, we must be aware that liars will always be there, deceivers will always be there. People are trying to intimidate and bully us. But uh, God is looking for men and women of courage. And uh, I thank God for the prayers of people who are praying, who are standing with me. And, uh, and other Africans who have not bowed down to the idol that, look, if, we, if you want a visa or if you want a scholarship or if you want money or if you want this or education, you must go and join the group called the Reverse Uganda Limited. Uh, but the, we, for us, we are driving forward, and that is the goal. Okay. You know, it's, uh, it's very helpful. I think one of the challenges for the African is that we live such incredibly busy lives, okay? We live such incredibly busy lives that we do not take time to study our history. Uh, and because we do not document our history, we have a problem. Because uh, if you look at uh, the whole movement of the homosexual movement in, in Uganda and in Africa, it's not just here. The same struggle is taking place in Nigeria, in Kenya, uh, Senegal. And uh, it's been very beneficial for me to sit down and read uh, the movement 
and the rise of the resistance, both from a theological, you remember Lambeth Conference? Lambeth, there was a fight in the Church of Uganda. There's been a fight between the European side of the church and the African side of the church. Uh, we, are, we see that in the Catholic church, even that, between the liberal side that, uh, that has come in with the new pope and the old one that I was there with the old pope. There are changes there and there is struggles there. We're seeing in the international world where the NGOs, NGOs that have decided, hey, we want to bring gay rights as a main issue, and those NGOs who are saying, no, we don't want that. So for me, it was a very beneficial time. Uh, the Bible says that what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good. It was good to sit down and study. And uh, I think my people are going to be happy to, to read, to, to know our history, to know that we come from a, a very rich history of men. We are, not the, we are not the alleged gay killers that we are, but we are dignified, honorable, honest men and women who are trying to protect our families and our children. And we're doing this with honor and dignity. The homosexuals in America and the Facebook people, they shut down my Facebook. But no, uh, as we are back, uh, we do recognize that, yeah, uh, it's time to continue speaking. Moses was 40 years in the desert, you remember? Then he came back. Rambo was sometimes away, but he also came back. Uh, people, people, Jesus was dead for three days, and he came back. So you can say the followers had scattered and everything, but he came back. Uh, it's not so much the struggles that we go through, but, but uh, they test us to be the metal. Are we men? Are we women of, of courage? Okay, lastly from me, uh, that now you have come back, what are some of the key issues you want to start with? Uh, I think that uh, what I see within us is that there is need for people to articulate who we are. We need to make ourselves visible. That it's not a crime to say that I'm straight, that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an honest, dignified, I don't do immoral things. We must make ourselves visible. We must pay attention to our children and mentor them. And uh, we must uh, defend ourselves. And one of the things is that silence will not help us. We must be able to speak clearly and loudly. Uh, Uganda, one of the reasons why Ugandans, uh, people don't like to come to Uganda because we've been receiving such bad publicity. They have said that we are gay killers. They have said that we are homosexual killers. And uh, it's because people want visas at the embassies. They go there and they say, oh, they are killing me. They go to um, Kenya. They say, oh, they are killing us. And uh, unfortunately, Western embassies are receiving these messages. It's a form of human trafficking. And there is movies that are being made about Uganda that say that Uganda is a worse place to be a homosexual. Unfortunately, that's not true. There are nightclubs of homosexuals in here. There are many homosexuals who are living a good life. In fact, they are enjoying the benevolence of the Europeans. Uh, so we must say that that's not who we are. And this is affecting our tourism. This is affecting our trade. This is affecting students who travel overseas. So the book that I'm going to be launching is actually an equipping our people to articulate that, look, this is who we are. This is the history. Because whenever you go overseas, they say, oh, you're from Uganda, where they kill homosexuals. And it's absolutely untrue. And this book helps to debunk all those lies that they have come up with. Okay, I'm sorry. Lastly, uh, someone will ask that you have been in America for some time. In fact, you are a youthful age. You spent in America. How come that you strongly oppose uh, uh, homosexuals, uh, given the fact that uh, America is known for harboring uh, homosexuals? Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand the question, but what I would say is that uh, speaking English does not make, make me a white man. I still eat matoke and nyama when I'm home. And uh, there, there, there are some things about who we are at the heart of who we are, whether you are a Muganda, whether you are a Choli, there's a rich culture. And in my culture of the Baganda, we ask Oyomwanawani, okay? Because in the end, you don't make decisions alone. You don't make them arbitrarily. You make decisions in the context of your clan, of your lineage, of your culture, of your tribe. So uh, I am still a Ugandan. I'm still an African, even though I travel in Europe, even though I travel in America, even though I don't become 
uh, as those people are because I'm in the, visiting their places. No, I'm still a Ugandan, born in Masaka, Naluzali, raised here, Yogero, Uganda, I'm learning Runyankore, that's my New Year's resolution. I speak Lusoga, Akirobe, Jokona, Acholi, Afo Mate, Eyala Manoi. when the, the, the different phases, when people fail to convince us on the advantages and disadvantages of doing homosexuality, then they relied on money and blackmail, using banks, uh, using uh, aid, using donations. So you find that people are divided. There are those who are willing to take the money and quietly accept uh, the homosexual agenda, and there are those who are saying, no, we will not take your money. When you look at Church of Uganda, it's a very good experience that they've gone through. There are some, like Bishop Senyonjo, who accepted the homosexual money, and they took it, and they are eating it, and there are people like that. Then there are those who have resisted it, and they said, look, you can keep your money, but we will remain standing, and we will depend on God. So yes, and we see this in all churches, whether it's born again, whether it's Anglican church, whether it's Catholic church, we see that the heart of people is, is being shaken by the temptation. Do we do what we know is immoral so that we can be able to receive the money that is given to us? Or can we be maybe poor but still honorable and dignified before God. And I think that's the, the, the debate, and that's where the heart of people are being. Some are swayed on one side, some are swayed on the other. Of course, I encourage them to stay steady and faithful to God's word. I do not wish to address that subject of uh, Pastor Male. It's always difficult when you have conflict amongst the people that you agree with. So I would rather have that debate when we are together and be able to get to the point of uh, what is, he was always asking for a commission of inquiry because he felt quite frustrated about that subject. He was frustrated that cases were being bungled in court. He was frustrated that uh, there was a lack of police attention to those cases and judicial attention. We were concerned that there was promotion, there was active promotion, and that there was necessity to discourage the promotion of homosexuality to our young people. So bringing those two goals together was, and seeing that they are not exclusive, the discouragement of promotion and the, the, promo, the, the, the necessity to search for uh, those who have sexually abused, especially young people who have molested them, facing the full course of the law was quite necessary. I think those two are complimentary. So the law should...